asked me what I wanted to do and I said very timidly that I wanted to be an actor and he sighed, took in a deep breath and said, Lupita, if there's anything else you want to do in your, with your life, do that instead. That was Lupita Nyong'o detailing what a Hollywood exec said to her at the beginning of her career. But that was only the half of it, as things got much worse. And the Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o says she's part of a growing community of women speaking out about alleged harassment by Harvey Weinstein. The major Hollywood star says it was time to step forward. The actress revealed that it was more than a hellish experience for her. I'd experienced this thing in isolation and I didn't know how rampant it was. I thought it was just me. And like many victims, you blame yourself. Turns out it wasn't just her, as other actors seem to have also gone through the same horrible patch. He only responded to two women. You and Lupita? Yeah. Right. To women of color. In fact, it seems finding other people who had been through something similar to her might have been the only reason she survived. I am benefiting from the efforts of a lot of yeah. other women who have come before me who have had it a lot rougher than I have. Mm -hmm. Over the years, several well-known celebrities have repeatedly spoken up about how they've experienced certain less than ideal things one way or the other on their journey to break through in the industry. And while for many, these things may have been as bad as homelessness, for Lupita Nyong'o, it was worse. According to the actress, it seems she had to come face to face with some of the worst kinds of adversities in the industry on the way to becoming who she is now, and the actress is finally ready to talk about it. You see, in Lupita's case, she already had the existing problem of having to deal with racism in the industry, but little did she know that it might have been the least of her problems at the time. Besides the intense form of racism that was the order of the day back in the early years of showbiz, the actress also had to deal with colorism at the hands of people who were also black like her. However, even that, as bad as it may be, wasn't the height of what she was faced with as a newbie in the industry. The actress, upon conquering all the other roadblocks that stood before her in the industry, also seems to have suffered an even worse fate by the movers and shakers of the industry, all in the name of getting a career. Her story to the top may have been filled with problems at every step, but from what she's achieved today, it's obvious none of those problems deterred her. Well now, Lupita seems to be ready to tell her story to the world, and seeing as the actress didn't hold back, it seems she might be putting some top players of the industry out of work with her stories. But don't just take it from me, let's go through it together. My journey with, with dealing with colorism and prejudice and all that, and one of the things I spoke about was I would pray to God every night for lighter skin. In Hollywood today, there are probably only a handful of people who have attained the level of success that comes with the name Lupita Nyong'o, as the actress has repeatedly been described as an effortless talent. However, her life in the real world has been from one industry roadblock to the next. Nonetheless, it's understandable that it may be difficult to see her as anything other than an enigma. Lupita Nyong'o started acting as a teen in Kenya and went on to work behind the scenes in the film The Constant Gardener. She then directed and produced the albinism documentary In My Jeans. Nyong'o went on to earn acclaim for her role as Patsy in 12 Years a Slave in 2013, for which she won the 2014 Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. The following year, she starred in several other successful movies and became one of the most sought-after African-American actor in the world. Outside the accolades attached to her name from having a successful acting career, Nyong'o is also credited as a majestic fashion icon, with red carpet appearances and pics in publications like InStyle. However, it seems all of this might have almost cost her everything. And I do mean everything. You see, before landing her big break in the industry, Lupita had to deal with certain bumps on her journey to success, and it seems those things she had to suffer through might have been about her race. However, the actress would eventually find out that racism was seemingly the beginning of her problems, as she would later be faced with a new problem in the form of colorism among people from other races and even some fellow black folks like her. The Oscar-winning actor told BBC that colorism is the daughter of racism in a world that rewards lighter skin over darker skin. Nyong'o was raised in Kenya before moving to the United States. She was speaking ahead of the release of her children's book, Sulwe, about a girl with darker skin than her family. For those who may not be aware, colorism is prejudice against people who have a darker skin tone or the preferential treatment of those who are of the same race but lighter skinned. And this was the life Lupita seems to have been relegated to for most of her early days in Hollywood. I definitely 
personally grew up feeling uncomfortable with my skin color because I felt like the world around me awarded lighter skin, the actress revealed. She said her younger sister, whose skin was lighter, was called beautiful and pretty. Self-consciously, that translates into, I'm not worthy. I tried to negotiate with God. I told him I would stop stealing sugar cubes at night. Just made me a little lighter. Nyong'o, who won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar for 12 Years a Slave, said colorism was very much linked to racism, despite the fact she experienced it in a predominantly black society like Kenya. We still ascribe to these notions of Eurocentric standards of beauty that then affect how we see ourselves among ourselves, she said. The actor said she was once told at an audition that she was too dark for television, but Nyong'o said the relationship to her skin had been separate from the relationship to her race. Race is a very social construct, one that I didn't have to ascribe to daily growing up, she said. As much as I was experiencing colorism in Kenya, I wasn't aware that I belonged to a race called black. That changed when she moved to the U.S. because suddenly the term black was being ascribed to me and it meant certain things that I was not accustomed to. Nyong'o's story stands as proof that there might be something deeply wrong with Hollywood because her life has taken a totally different direction since her first step, but the actress has been relentless in showing her struggles to the world. Her Essence Black Beauty Award acceptance speech, for instance, reflected that sentiment. I remember a time when I too felt unbeautiful. I put on the TV and only saw pale skin. I got teased and taunted about my night-shaded skin. And my one prayer to God, the miracle worker, was that I would wake up lighter skinned. When I saw supermodel Alec Weck, I inadvertently saw a reflection of myself that I could not deny. Now I had a spring in my step because I felt more seen, more appreciated by the faraway gatekeepers of beauty. Besides dealing with struggles that had her questioning her beauty because of her race and complexion, Lupita also had to deal with several even more messed up problems down the line, one of which involved an industry executive wanting to take advantage of her. That's right, according to an account of Lupita's own experiences in the industry, she had a run-in with famed filmmaker Harvey Weinstein that seems to have left a scar on her soul. And the Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o says she's part of a growing community of women speaking out about alleged harassment by Harvey Weinstein. The major Hollywood star says it was time to step forward. Per the news, Lupita Nyong'o has come forward about her encounters with Harvey Weinstein in an op-ed in the New York Times, writing that not only did Weinstein attempt to ply her with alcohol when she met with him at a restaurant, but after they moved the meeting to his home to watch a film screening, tried to give her a massage. At a later meeting, the Oscar-winning actress wrote that Weinstein propositioned her in a hotel restaurant. According to Nyong'o, she met with Weinstein for the second time, after having initially met him in 2011 at an award ceremony in Berlin while she was still in school at Yale, when he asked her to attend a screening at his home after sharing lunch at a restaurant. When she arrived at the restaurant in Westport, where Weinstein lived, Nyong'o described Weinstein ordering her a vodka soda and insisting that she drink it. Harvey told me that I needed to drink the vodka and diet soda. I informed him that I would not, she wrote, why not? I remember him asking, because I don't like vodka, and I don't like diet soda, and I don't like them together. I said, you are going to drink that, he insisted. I smiled again and said that I wouldn't. He gave up and called me stubborn. I said, I know. After finishing their meal, she and Weinstein relocated to his home, where Nyong'o was introduced to his domestic staff and children. Academy Award-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o, who released a, a four-page, uh, really interesting, compelling, and disturbing uh, accusation of her experience with Harvey Weinstein. I Nyong'o wrote that she, Weinstein, and his children all began watching the film together. About 15 minutes into the film, however, Weinstein asked her to accompany him outside the room. I protested that I wanted to finish the film first, but he insisted I go with him, laying down the law as though I too was one of his children. I did not want another back and forth in front of his kids, so I complied and left the room with him. I explained that I really wanted to see the film. He said we'd go back shortly. Harvey led me into a bedroom, his bedroom, and announced that he wanted to give me a massage. I thought he was joking at first. He was not. For the first time since I met him, I felt unsafe. I panicked a little and thought quickly to offer to give him one instead. It would allow me to be in control physically, to know exactly where his hands were at all times. Nyong'o wrote that after he removed his shirt and she began giving him a massage, he asked if he could remove his pants. 
she said she would prefer that he didn't, and that it would make her extremely uncomfortable if he did so. Despite her protests, Weinstein got up to remove them, at which point Nyong'o moved toward the door. I opened the door and stood by the frame. He put his shirt on and again mentioned how stubborn I was, she wrote. I agreed with an easy laugh, trying to get myself out of the situation safely. I was after all on his premises, and the members of his household, the potential witnesses, were all in a soundproof room. In retrospect, the actress seems to believe that them being in a soundproof room might have been a strategic move from Weinstein, and you'll see why she thought that. Nyong'o wrote that she didn't quite know how to process the massage incident and rationalized it. I reasoned that it had been inappropriate and uncalled for, but not overtly s asterisk Sewell. I was entering into a business where the intimate is often professional, and so the lines are blurred. Then what's particularly troubling is that uh, she alleges that when uh, he left, he told her that she was very beautiful and that she was going to work in Hollywood. So we're seeing that power dynamic play out in these allegations. The actress continued that after the encounter, she met up with Weinstein once more, this time accompanied by friends as well as some of Weinstein's colleagues, for dinner and a staged reading of his new Broadway show, Finding Neverland. During this meeting, Nyong'o experienced no awkwardness, and the fact that Weinstein was accompanied by other female actresses made her even more inclined to brush off the previous incident as an awkward encounter. A couple of months down the line, Nyong'o revealed Weinstein had invited her to have drinks with him after a screening of We. According to Nyong'o, a male assistant arranged her transportation from the reading to the Tribeca Grill, where she would meet Weinstein for drinks. Although she assumed it would be a group of people, as it had been for the reading when she arrived at the restaurant, she was informed by a female assistant that it would just be her and Weinstein. The assistant waited with her until Weinstein appeared, at which time she left. Again, he was offended by my non-alcoholic beverage choice, but he didn't fight me on it as hard, Nyong'o detailed. Before the starters arrived, he announced, let's cut to the chase, I have a private room upstairs where we can have the rest of our meal. I was stunned. I told him I preferred to eat in the restaurant. He told me not to be so naive. If I wanted to be an actress, then I had to be willing to do this sort of thing. He said he had dated famous actresses X and Y, and look where that had gotten them. Nyong'o said she was silent as she tried to think of something to say, and eventually declined politely, to which he responded, You have no idea what you are passing up. Nyong'o replied, With all due respect, I would not be able to sleep at night if I did what you are asking, so I must pass. At that point, Weinstein's demeanor changed, and he said, Then I guess we are two ships passing in the night. Nyong'o, not having heard the phrase before, asked him what it meant. He explained and then said, So we are done here. You can leave. Weinstein and Nyong'o left the restaurant, and Weinstein insisted on paying her cab fare. Before I got in, I needed to make sure that I had not awakened a beast that would go on to ruin my name and destroy my chances in the business, even before I got there, she wrote. I just want to know that we are good, I said. I don't know about your career, but you'll be fine, he said. It felt like both a threat and a reassurance at the same time, of what I couldn't be sure. The next time she saw him, Nyong'o said, was in 2013 at an after-party for the premiere of 12 Years a Slave. Weinstein found her and commended her for her rapid progress in the industry. He said he couldn't believe how fast I had gotten to where I was and that he had treated me so badly in the past. He was ashamed of his actions and he promised to respect me moving forward. I said thank you and left it at that, but I made a quiet promise to myself to never ever work with Harvey Weinstein. Now that Lupita is telling her story, it goes even beyond just Weinstein, as it touches on the entire industry. What she, what she keeps calling out in this New York Times piece is she wants to combat the conspiracy of silence in Hollywood. Although this is a sensitive subject, the Black Panther actress would later realize that she might have only been one on a list of other women who had been met with a similar fate, and she mentioned it in her tale too. Nyong'o finished her statement by explaining that she had no idea at the time that this behavior from Weinstein was something other women were dealing with as well. For starters, he was one of the first people she'd met in the industry, which seemingly prevented her from coming forward sooner. And besides that, there is the fact that no one else seemed to be challenging him. I wish I had known that there were women in the business I could have talked to. I wish I had known that there were ears to hear me, that justice could be served. There is clearly power in numbers. I thank the women who have spoken up and given me the strength to revisit this unfortunate moment in my past.
According to reports, it seems Nyong'o might have been right about Weinstein having a behavioral pattern because it turns out there might have been a lot more to the stories about him than even Nyong'o could have imagined. But the problem was that he sat and ate at the table of the top players of the film industry. Since the establishment of the first studios a century ago, there have been few movie executives as dominant or as domineering as Harvey Weinstein. He co-founded the production and distribution companies Miramax and The Weinstein Company, aimed at reinventing the model for independent films with several movies. However, the exec's name has also picked up a lot of dirt over the years, and it seems they might be coming back to haunt him now. Well, just as Lupita has opened her life up to the world about her struggles with her self-image, among other impositions that seem to have been put on her by Hollywood, a lot of other people have connected with her horrible experience and have been talking. One person wrote, I'm so sick of our dark-skinned women being treated this way. She is beyond gorgeous in every single way. I'm so sorry she went through this. I'm so sick to my stomach. Others seem to be mind-blown by her incredible courage to step out to face the world and the seemingly untouchable people in the industry, even while she was hurting. They wrote, This is so beautiful and eye-opening, we truly have no idea what pain people carry around with them and the rut they get stuck in out of fear. How motivating. Looks like there are more eyes on the entertainment industry than ever. Who knows, maybe this is what finally leads to the very needed reform. That's it for now, goodbye.